Welcome to Newsday, I'm Heather Butts. Muhammad Ali is known as the greatest boxer of all time because of the incredible impact he had in and out of the ring. But there was a secret weapon behind Ali's success. Drew Boondini Brown was his corner man and also coined the famous phrases which will forever be associated with Ali. And now a new book is taking him out of the shadows of boxing history to shine the spotlight on how he shaped a boxing legend. Ali was my hero. And I was always fascinated by Bundini because he was sort of the street poet in Muhammad Ali's corner. He was the guy who came up with the rhymes, you know, of course, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. And they had those great pre-fight routines where Ali would make up rhymes. When Todd Snyder started to dig into the relationship between Bundini and Ali, he discovered it went much deeper. For all intents and purposes, Muhammad Ali's hype man, his motivator, his spirit coach, he wasn't there to teach Ali how to throw a jab or to correctly dodge a punch. He was there to keep him motivated through the grueling process of training and motivated in between rounds, especially when the fight wasn't going Ali's way, which did happen in some of those great rivalries. Anyone who's been in a boxing training camp understands the importance of every day's got to be your best day because really you win the fight in the gym before you ever get to the ring. Boondini knew all about winning. He coached another legend, Sugar Ray Robinson, who was Ali's idol. That's how they met. I'm sure Ali took him on because he knew how great Sugar Ray was and he wanted a little bit of that magic. Whatever it was Boondini was giving Sugar Ray, he wanted some of it too. And the magic rubbed off, match after match. The very first time he works with Ali is when the night Ali becomes the heavyweight champion of the world by upsetting Sonny Liston. Bodini, tell him, what are we gonna do? You're gonna float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah, ah. rumble, young man, rumble. Ah, that's what we're gonna do. You heard it. That's my trainer. He'll tell you. He pulled off this improbable upset, and everything Boudini said he was gonna do, it all came true. They're side by side for 21 years. All the great Joe Frazier trilogy, the Ken Norton fights, the George Foreman fight in Zaire. He has Boondini with him, hyping him up and doing those great rhymes. Boondini became part of the pop culture landscape as well. Boondini, he was a part of those Shaft movies that came out in the 70s. And, you know, critics call that the black exploitation genre. But they were the first movies ever with black directors, all black cast. And then he went on to do six other films. He had a cameo in The Color of Purple. Think about it, Boondini worked with Sugar Ray, Muhammad Ali, he worked with Steven Spielberg. He was in a Superman comic. This is a guy who lived an amazing life. He was a pop culture icon. But for all his ability to motivate others, he struggled in his own life. He had had an accident where he was, he had been drinking and fell down a flight of stairs and the fall was devastating. It left him quadriplegic. And this time it was Ali who coached him in his final days. And one of the touching moments there is Ali takes a towel and, and dabs Bundini's forehead. He said, it's my turn to wipe your sweat. You know, because Bundini had been there to do that for him all those years. And look, this is a friendship that like any friendship that goes over decades, it had its ups and downs. They had their falling out, they had their fights, but they were, they were dear friends all the way to the end. We all have a Bundini in our lives in some way. Maybe it's a teacher, maybe it's a dear friend, but we all have someone who picks us up when we're down. We all have someone that helps us get to where we gotta be in life. 